and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up, and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, Lord, hast brought my soul out of hell. Thou hast kept my life from them that go down to the pit. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks unto him for remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be removed. Thou, Lord of thy goodness, hast made my hill so strong. Thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then I cried unto thee, O Lord, and got me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust give thanks unto thee, or shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore shall every good man sing of thy praise without ceasing. O my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the third chapter of the Book of Lamentations beginning at the 19th verse. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth, he sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it up upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust, if so, be there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth it. He is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion 
according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. Here ends the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the 20th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 17th verse. Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock, and to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life, a ransom for many. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. 
and they followed him. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, Almighty God, mercifully to look upon thy people, that by thy great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore, both in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of them that are penitent, Create in making us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, 
and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Confident that God hears us when we cry out to him in our need, we now place our petitions before him. Let us pray for God's holy church throughout the world, for our Diocese of Norwich, for our bishops Graham, Jonathan, and Allen, and for the benefits of Colgate and Tumland. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all world leaders, that all nations may work together in care and compassion for our world and all its peoples as one human family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we come closer to the celebration of the Passion of Christ, may we be aware of the suffering of God's people and come to their aid led by the love and compassion of our God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all of us who feel isolated and alone. May this be a time to be with the Lord, to rest in God's love, to pray for each other and for those working so hard to care for the sick and the dying. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all young people. May this be a time of inspiration and strength to renew their faith and inspire in them vocations to service in the church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our medical personnel who risk their lives to help those suffering from the virus. Let us pray for all people working to find a vaccine and all those whose work allows us to continue in difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our loved ones near and far and for those who have asked for prayers, especially Father Allen, Father Jonathan, Mel, Barry, Derek, Canon Richard, Paul, Leah and family, Elizabeth and family, Megan, Derek, Mel, Fiona, Robert, Susan, Clarence and his sister, Stephen, Nairi, Sally, and George. And for all those who have left prayer requests at St. George Colgate Church, that they may know the Lord's healing power and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let us pray for those who have recently died, especially Douglas, Jackie, and Trevor, for all are dead and for all who mourn, that they may be comforted. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.